Hey guys, welcome to channel DevKali. In this video, I'll show you how you can use form widget to create simple forms and get user data. I'll also show you how you can put some simple validations in place to make sure that all the invalid input gets filtered out. So let's get started. First, I'll replace the center widget with a container. Inside this container, I'll set form widget as the child. And since I'll be needing multiple input fields in this form, I'll add a column widget as the child of this form. Inside this column, let's add a text form field widget. I'll use this field to get username from user. And to indicate that this field is for username, I'll set the decoration property of this widget as input decoration. As you can see, input decoration has many properties and one of them is label text. I'll set the label text as username. If I save this code, you will see an input field in the app with label text as username. This looks pretty basic right now. So just to show you how easy it is to make this field a little fancy, I'll use the border property of input decoration and set an outline input border with its border radius as 20. And as you can see, now the username field has a rounded outline. I'll also quickly add padding to this container so that the input field does not stick to the edges. Just like the label text, you can use the hint text property to display a hint in the input field when user taps on it. As I said, there are many other properties to input decoration that you can play with and get the desired decoration. So now that we have input field, let's see how we can add validation to it. For this, I'll use the validator property of text form field. This property needs a function which takes the current string of input field as input and returns an error string if any of the validations fail. I'll create a function here with value as a string input. In here, I'll check if the value string is empty. If it is empty, I'll return an error saying username cannot be empty. And if that is not the case, then I'll return null, which indicates that all validations passed. Now this validator has to be called explicitly by us when user submits the form. But to quickly show you how this works, I'll set the auto validate property to true here. Basically this continuously keeps on running the validation on this text field. If I save this, you can see that the error message gets displayed below the input field. If I type anything in this field, the message will go away and it will come back if input is empty. But we want to run the validation explicitly. So I'll remove this auto validate property. To run the validation explicitly, I'll use the floating action button. I'll quickly add a blank on press function and set the child for this button as done icon. Now to execute all the validation functions of all the text form fields inside this form widget, we need a form key. This key will help us to uniquely identify this form and will also allow us to get the current state of the form. For this, I'll create a variable called form key, which will be a global key of type form state. Next, I'll set this form key as the key property of this form widget. And now, in the onPress function of floating action button, we can write form key.currentState.validate. This will go and execute all the validator functions of all the text form fields inside this form. So if I click this floating action button, we will see that error message. We can also have multiple validations for a text field. For example, I can add an else if condition here which will check if the length of input string is less than 3. If it is less, then I'll return another error message saying that username must be at least 3 characters long. And now if I put a really small username and hit the done button, we will see the new error message. Now let's try to add some more input fields to this form. But before that, I'll quickly extract out this form widget as a method called build form. To add more fields, I'll simply duplicate this first field. I'll use this one for password input. So I'll make necessary changes in the label text and validator function. Right now, these fields are sticking to each other. So let's wrap them in padding widget. This looks a little better now. Now I'll duplicate this password field to represent the confirm password. Label text for this will be confirm password as well. So now we need some way to ensure that the input in password and confirm password field are exactly the same. For that we will need some controllers. I'll create two text editing controllers and name them password controller and confirm password controller. Next I'll set these variables as controller for both password fields. 
Now I'll go to the validator function of confirm password and remove all these validations. Now here we can compare the input value string with password controller dot value dot text. If they are not equal then I'll return an error message saying passwords do not match. And now if I click on the submit button we will see errors only for username and password. This is because confirm password and password are blank and they match. So no error will be shown for confirm password. Next I'll give a valid username and an invalid password. And now you can see that we get error for password length and password mismatch. If I give a valid password we will get error only for password mismatch. Finally if everything is valid all the errors will be gone. So that is how validations work in form. Since we have password field here it does not make sense to show them in plain text. So for that you can set the obscure text property of text form field to true. This will make sure that the inputs in password field get obscured. Also it is more likely that you would want to perform some operations when all validations pass. And for that you can put this validate call in an if check. It returns true only when all validations pass. To show that I'll put a debug print statement here saying all validations pass. And now if we check the debug console after pressing the submit button you will see that it prints this debug print statement. I'll also like to show you how to change the keyboard type depending on the type of text form field. For that I'll create one more field before username. This one will be to get mobile number from users. Now since we know mobile numbers will always be a bunch of digits it will be better if the keyboard just shows digit keys. To achieve this you can use the keyboard type property of text form field. Here you can specify a text input type from all these available options like email address, number, text, phone and many more. So if I set this to phone and save this, you can see that when I click on the mobile field the keyboard shows only digits. One important thing that I forgot to do here is to destroy the controllers. Basically you have to free up these controllers when the state is destroyed. For that I'll override the dispose method and in here I'll call dispose on both the controllers. So that was all I had for this video. I hope this will help some of you to design cool forms and proper validations. As always all the code is available in the github repository linked in the description. So check that out if you missed something. If you liked the video hit that like button and consider subscribing for more such content.